Lithium ion batteries are everywhere, in our phones, laptops, cars, appliances, and of course, even in electric bikes. And for the most part, we trust them. But lately, fear and confusion around e-bike batteries have been growing, leading to overreaching precautions with unintended market repercussions, like apartment building owners outright banning them in places like New York City. Lithium ion batteries being blamed tonight for causing yet another fire. Time to think about banning these deadly bikes. The FDNY has said e-bike batteries are a growing problem in the city. The cause, authorities say, was a lithium ion e-bike battery again. While safety is a real concern, banning e-bikes isn't the solution. The real issue isn't e-bikes. It's a lack of safety standards and proper education around lithium ion battery use. More than 100 lithium ion batteries sitting inside this e-bike shop in Chinatown. Flammable batteries plugged into power strips. My name is Kat and I'm the CEO of Propel Bikes. I've been with Propel since 2011. And from the very beginning, our commitment to offering only the most premium products and experiences has never wavered. That's why our partnership with Bosch e-bike systems has always made sense. They build their systems to the highest safety standards in the world. Over the past several years, both Propel's founder, Chris, and I have worked very closely with the Bosch team. Recently, we co-hosted an event to talk about battery safety. We held two back-to-back -back sessions. The first welcomed members of the local media, while the second brought together industry professionals, advocates, government agencies, including New York City's Department of Transportation, FDNY, Underwriters Laboratories, and many others. One of the concerns we heard was how these blanket bans on e-bikes are unfairly affecting responsible riders. People who use electric bikes that have been tested to the UL standard as their primary mode of transportation. I'm an everyday commuter and I also use my e-bike to get around the city, take my kids to school. It has improved my life and given me more options to get around New York City. But here's the thing, misinformation plays a huge role in this. It hurts everybody involved and only creates more fear. At the beginning of this year, the Consumer Product Safety Commission held a meeting on lithium ion batteries, and it was clear that spreading misinformation or a lack of proper knowledge was common. You also mentioned in the package that in New York alone, over 400 buildings were damaged in lithium ion battery fires. And we can't include those incidents in this NPR data analysis because there may be some gaps in that data uh, where it's not exactly clear which types of products were involved. At our event, two news stations showed up. One of them covered the discussion thoughtfully, highlighting the core safety messages and helping viewers to better understand how to make informed choices when it comes to electric bikes. Okay, do you feel confused regarding e-bike regulations in the city? Well, you're not alone. News 12 captured it perfectly. They spread awareness and proper knowledge that can help people make informed decisions. The most important thing you can do, in my opinion, is obviously first purchase a certified product. Do what the warning label says. Read the instruction manual. Pixel 11 took a different approach, focusing on dramatic visuals like burnt mopeds and emphasizing the need to charge bikes outdoors. Unfortunately, their coverage didn't really touch on one of the most important aspects of the conversation, the difference between uncertified products and those tested to rigorous safety standards. Same event, completely different coverage. We'll leave a link to the full video in the description if you'd like to check it out. This is a big part of the problem, and we're not trying to pick on anyone, including the media, but when the media distorts the narrative, it fuels fear, deepens polarization, and takes us further from real solutions. What we need is more education and enforcement on safety standards. Batteries tested to the UL standard are much safer alternatives. Like many of the electrical products in your house, including toasters, battery-powered toothbrushes, and other appliances, they're certified to a safety standard, unlike the uncertified electric bikes and mopeds being known to cause fires around New York City. To understand the issue, we need to talk about safety standards. Bosch's quality and compliance manager explained the two key safety standards for e-bike batteries. And currently there are two safety standards that are out there published by UL that cover the world of e-bikes and the batteries they use. The first one is the UL2849, which is the gold standard is how I like to refer it because it covers the complete electrical system of an e-bike. The standard is not for the e-bike itself, it's for the electrical system of an e-bike. And the other standard is the UL2271, which is the standard for the lithium-ion battery pack that the e-bikes use. These standards are still not mandatory across the board, although 
Last month, the Consumer Product Safety Commission convened to discuss and vote on an NPR, which stands for Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, to establish a mandatory safety standard for lithium-ion batteries used in micromobility devices. Commissioner Hunt how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Trumka? Yes. Commissioner Boyle? Yes. Commissioner Ziak? No. And I vote no. The yeses are threes, the noes are twos. The notice of the proposed rulemaking has been approved and shall be published in the Federal Register. Not having mandatory safety standards across the board creates an uneven playing field where some manufacturers follow best practices, others cut corners, often leading to dangerous situations. While New York City has banned the selling of electric bikes that are not certified to the UL standard, there's plenty of room to still bring these products into the city from elsewhere. John Orlando, a retired FDMY supervising fire marshal, emphasized that we need strong federal intervention. Much of what I learned in the last few years was that we really do need standards. Unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, miscommunication, misunderstanding. We do need unified standards. We, we're just a local fire department here in New York City. We're just a local city. But we really need intervention at the federal level. Without mandatory safety regulations, consumers are left vulnerable to dangerous, uncertified batteries flooding the market. In fact, it is estimated that less than 15% of e-bikes in America are certified to the UL standard. That leaves a lot of room for improvement. These federal laws would ensure that untested and unsafe batteries aren't allowed in the first place. But until then, e-bike growth has outpaced our infrastructure. The Public Advocates Office released a report titled, Stopping the Blaze, outlining solutions like battery swapping programs, fireproof charging stations, and better disposal practices. When it comes to e-bikes and e-scooter and this technology, I think we are seeing exponential boom, especially since COVID, that people were relying on this technology a lot more. The technology <laughs> surpassed the infrastructure that we have in place right now in the city. But we want to also look at the things that are going right right now to have the city administration spend some uh, money to expand that infrastructure. There are now subsidies available to help make safe, certified e-bikes more affordable. And recently, the New York City Department of Transportation announced that property owners and tenants can now apply for permission to install e-bike battery charging cabinets on sidewalks, a big step in supporting safer infrastructure and encouraging adoption. That's a huge win. It means cities are finally investing in real infrastructure for a future with e-bikes. E-bikes are on the rise and they're here to stay. More people than ever are turning to electric bikes as their primary mode of transportation. Cities are taking notice, and we're seeing real progress. This will reduce apartment fires caused by lithium-ion batteries. The charging stations will be outside in a cabinet on the sidewalk. But while this is progress and great for the short term until we can get all e-bikes certified, it's also a bit misleading when it comes to properly certified products, like the ones we sell. From my perspective, it's basically suggesting we need to keep safe products safe. Let's be clear. A Bosch-powered e-bike certified to the UL standard is not the same as a gray market moped bought off of Facebook. It's time we stop treating them like they're the same, because if we don't, even safe bikes will keep getting banned, and the people who rely on them will be left behind. This is a pivotal moment. There's momentum, there's progress, and there's also work to do to make sure it's built on education and accuracy. This is still a young industry, and we're lucky to have companies like Bosch setting the standard. What can we do as individuals? Education is key, hence this video. Consumers need to know what to look for. Certifications to the UL standard, warranties, and proper charging practices. And we have some places like New York making a requirement, some other places making a requirement, but it's still a bit messy. How do we work through that? I think a big part of that is education, communication, you know, working together, starting to have that unified voice of what is good, what is safe, what is right. I think a lot of that information still hasn't fully traveled to the consumer, which is a really big challenge and it's something that I've historically tried to work on a lot. So I have a YouTube channel and I talk a lot about this topic and, and I think that Everybody in the community does have a certain responsibility to encourage and to instill safety because if we want this thing to grow, that's really the only way that's going to happen. The lack of well-substantiated, evidence-based, appropriately vetted decision-making has failed businesses like ours and New York City residents. As a business, we've faced real challenges, especially around battery safety regulations. And I believe the root of that challenge is a lack of understanding of the actual technology what's dangerous, what's not, and what's simply being misclassified. 
We've talked a lot about safety standards, misinformation, and the need for real policy solutions, but there's one more piece we can't ignore, insurance. Right now, some insurance companies are dropping entire homeowner policies just because someone stores an e-bike in their garage. I personally know someone who got dropped just for keeping their Bosch powered e-bike in a backyard shed. Even if the bike is certified to the UL standard, even if it follows every safety standard in the book. And did you know Underwriter Laboratories was originally created by insurance companies for insurance companies? It started in 1894 after a series of deadly fires caused by early electrical devices. Insurers needed a way to evaluate which products were actually safe so they could set fair rates and avoid massive losses. UL became the gold standard for identifying what's safe and what's not. Its entire mission was to protect people and property and to help insurers make informed decisions based on facts, not fear. This has to stop because here's the truth. When companies invest in real safety protocols, like Bosch does, it shows. Their battery systems include multiple layers of protection, including a BMS, also known as a battery management system, that continuously monitors key safety factors like temperature, voltage, and charge levels. These systems are designed to detect and mitigate potential hazards before they can become dangerous. So why are products like these being lumped in with the uncertified, unsafe ones? When the differences between certified and uncertified batteries are ignored, we all lose. This isn't just about bikes. It's about equity, access, and building a future where clean transportation is supported, not penalized. So where do we go from here? We need to move forward together. Knee-jerk policies like outright bans may seem like quick fixes, but they ignore the very real utility and potential of this technology. New York City has led the change in many ways and deserves credit for the progress made especially around infrastructure. There are many new bike lanes being added all around the city. If you haven't been to New York City recently, I strongly suggest you come visit. But when it comes to battery safety, there's still a long road ahead. It's the most urgent and visible piece of this puzzle. Yet the city's current approach is incomplete, and in some cases, misguided. New York City should not be held to the gold standard just yet, and other cities would be wise not to copy and paste its strategy. In the interest of collaboration, I've chosen not to publicly call out every shortfall. My hope is that this video prompts more honest conversation with experts, with advocates, and with those making policy, because there are people who understand these issues deeply. I'm one of them, and I ride every day alongside others who've done the work to understand these batteries and still trust them enough to bring them into their homes. This isn't about blind faith. It's about informed trust. Real safety will come from listening to those who are immersed in the issue, not sidelining them. Let's keep asking the hard questions. Keep pushing for better standards. If you don't truly know the solution, don't put together a policy. Hold off. Try to find accurate information. Keep working towards solutions that protect people without cutting them off from the tools that they rely on. That's the only path forward. If we want safer, smarter, and a more sustainable future, for everyone, this is it.